Welcome to Sculpture Studios. We have a Welsh themed piece of sculpture here, inspired by some family friends way down in the UK's smallest city of St David's. As the final resting place for the patron saint of Wales, and with the flag being the dragon he slayed in the Welsh stories, we're going to be creating a red Welsh dragon, or rather a draigoch, but you might need to check my pronunciation on that one. And not to be confused with the word grai, which means wife, so let's hope I got that one right. Anyway, we've collaborated a few different images together, and what we're doing is taking different parts of each dragon that we like the look of, to form the final aesthetically pleasing design that you can see here. We want to create something with a nice stable base, so it's going to be sitting on some rocks. The wings are going to be kept roughly within the perimeter of the base footprint, so people can't bump into them too easily. And tiny tweaks like the classic triangular tongue depicted in the Welsh flag. This is going to be carved from polystyrene with a blanket coat of glass fibre, and rendered to resemble a red stone-like finish. Chris is going to be doing the initial blocking out, and nothing would be complete without some terrible project-related jokes to annoy him with. Hope you scaled it up correctly, Chris. Just gonna have to grab this project by the horns, isn't you, really? It's gonna be a drag this project, eh, Chris? It's going to drag on. You know what they say? No smoke without fire. I'm winging it. In exactly the same way you saw the image gridded up on paper, this is now what we're doing here in full scale, translating the paper image up to the large blocks of polystyrene. For some jobs we felt it's necessary to go down a CNC machine cutting route, and this is where we've needed to get something made deadly accurate. We even receive emails from time to time from companies offering to convert our business to a more machine heavy process. But we say the same thing to each and every one, that carving is why Aidan started the business, and why he's loved doing his job every day since. Not only does going down a CNC route often take up the vast majority of the project budget, particularly if it's something that needs to be modelled on a computer first, but it takes away what Aidan loves doing the most. All of the carving is being done using the usual handheld hot wires, nail brushes, wire brushes, and then down to smaller tools like knives and stonemason rifflers for the finer detail. We're going over the larger body sections and creating scales that blend seamlessly into areas without scales like the wings, the throat and the chest. We're cutting the detail slightly deeper, as the blanket coat of glass fibre over the top will soften the detail slightly, and this definition can also be accentuated in the artwork later on. We've created the right arm in an upright position, so the dragon can hold a Welsh flag, so he's basically going to be holding a self-portrait of himself. Though we had the image we photoshopped at the beginning of the job as a base inspiration, the parts that you can't make out of an image, or that are open to interpretation, are carved freely from imagination. As it's our own creation, I guess everything is open to interpretation, especially as there's no definitive way for a dragon to look, so we're just going with what looks good, muscles and scales in the right places, chuck on a couple of wings and some horns, and you've got a dragon. Once we're happy with the carving, everything is then sanded down to a smoother finish to lose the polystyrene bead texture. 
This way it's then ready to go over with our sticky back tin foil, which gives the polystyrene a protective barrier against the resin on top. We're going over the whole sculpture with a general purpose resin and glass fibre mat, and we've added a black pigment for a couple of reasons. This is so that we can see a little easier where we've already covered, and so that the sculpture has a nice dark base layer for the artwork. Eventually, Aidan's going to be going over with an airbrush to deepen the dark spots on the sculpture and give the whole piece a more theatrical 3D feel. Speaking of artwork, here's Jess starting on the eyes now, and we're going to be using glass hemispheres with a hand-painted backing to create the orb eye effect. Once we've built the fiberglass up to a strong enough thickness, a couple of ounces in thickness in this case, we go over with a flexible concrete render. Like the foil, this is one of the materials we use that we're asked a lot about. You've seen it numerous times in our previous projects, and it's a sprayable, air-drying concrete mix, and the word flexible refers to the fact that it can expand and retract in the heat slightly, as opposed to being actually elastic or bendy, so as a thin render on top, it's good for outside use, for a finishing texture, and a tiny bit of added strength. And there's Kevin. Great, thanks Kev. Aiden's now using a variety of methods to build the artwork up in layers to create this rough stone-like effect. A dusting using a spray gun to get the base layer colours on quickly, a splatter brush technique with a stick, and even down to something as small as a toothbrush size for the more detailed areas, and from a distance this creates a perfect blend to resemble rock, and up close you can see all the surprising amount of colours that's often integrated into real stone. This is the same way you would have multiple pigments in the colour of your skin. As mentioned earlier, Aiden's now accentuating all the detail using an airbrush. The final step is to apply a lacquer and this seals the paint and helps protect the sculpture from the elements. We hope you've enjoyed the creation process, and perhaps it's inspired you to try something of your own, even if it's something that isn't quite on this scale. If we're able to create something using handmade tools and no fancy equipment, then there's no limit to what you guys can do yourself. We'd like to thank Chris for coming in and helping with the initial carve, and to all those Welsh people out there, apologies for not speaking much Welsh in this video, you'd think considering I've just come back from Llemfer Pwch Gwyn Githo Gara Wendrovis Santa Silio Gogogoch, you'd think I'd probably know a little bit more. Please feel free to leave any comments below, as they're always appreciated, and hit the subscribe button for our latest videos. You can like Sculpture Studios on Facebook, and follow at Aidan Hines on Twitter, and for more of our work, visit sculpturestudios.co.uk. Thank you very much for watching.